Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kandan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering and the Coordinator Teaching Learning Center, Care College of Engineering, Trichy. This is the fourth lecture in the outcome-based education. Today the topic is Effective Assessment of a Lecture. What is assessment? So assessment is the popular word in the OBE framework. The term assessment refers to the wide variety of methods or tools that educators use to evaluate, measure and document the academic readiness, learning progress, skill acquisition or educational needs of a student. So it is a process for certain purposes. So it is a measure of the student learning, it is a measure of student skill acquisition or other educational needs. Assessment is a systematic collection and analysis of information to improve the student learning. So the purpose of assessment is to improve the student learning. So it is not a one-time event, but it is dynamic ongoing process uh, throughout the program or throughout the course. So what are the different assessment levels? So when you are talking about outcome based education or NBA accreditation, there are three levels, program assessment or program attainment, the assessment of academic program at the end of four years of the program or if it is other program depending on the duration of the program, maybe B mechanical engineering or MBA or BR program, so program assessment. Course assessment, assessment of specific courses on completion of the course, course a subject it may be English, computer programming, Python programming, data structure, engineering thermodynamics, so like that, course assessment. So classroom assessment or lecture assessment. So the assessment of individual students at the course level for every lecture typically by the class instructor, the course instructor. So among the three assessment, so the third one, classroom assessment or the lecture assessment is very, very important uh, for for measuring the learning level or understanding level of the student in a particular subject. So when we achieve the effective lecture assessment or the classroom assessment, so the other two will automatically will happen. The course assessment and the program assessment will effectively happen across the program. So we ask questions in the classroom. So all of all the teachers, we are asking questions in the classroom for some reasons. So these are all the few reasons I have listed here to help the student to review the content, to check the comprehension skill of the student, to stimulate the critical thinking, to encourage the creativity of the student, to emphasize a point. We repeatedly ask question to emphasize a particular point, to control the classroom activity. So to have a proper order of the class and to cut down the disruptive behavior. Somebody in the corner, uh, they may be disturbing your class, they may be talking with their neighbor. So we have to ask questions to him and put him in, uh, uh, ask him to make him to listen to the class. To help to determine the grades, so to find out the grades or evaluate the grades of this subject, we are doing the question, we are asking the question. To encourage discussion among the students in the classroom to discourage the inattentiveness. So these are all the some of the reasons uh, we are asking questions in the classroom. There are two types of assessment. So one is formative assessment, another one is summative assessment. So formative assessment, the assessment questions may be true or false, multiple choice questions or multiple select questions, match the matching the block, rearrangement of the terms, uh, rating scales. So these are all the formative assessment question and uh, we will be following. So if you look at any of the competitive examination, uh, there may be multiple choice questions or multiple select question, true or false questions. So all the questions, they are very looking very simple, but uh, you, you, the student can answer or uh, anybody can answer only when, the, when they know the fundamentals. The summative assessment, so sketching and labeling. Uh, short answers, structured responses, numerical questions or problem solving or detailed answer. Sketching, draw the sketch and 
write down the parts, indicate the parts. In the case of a drawing, a short answer questions, simple answers, uh, writing a few sentences to answer the question. And the structured responses, something like drawing the uh, flow chart or deriving the equation, something structured responses for a particular question. Solving numerical problems in a particular topic or writing the essay type of questions are the detailed answers. So, what is the use of the formative assessment? So, formative assessment refers to wide variety of method that teachers use to conduct in-process evaluation of the student's comprehension, in-process, during the class. So, the, to ask the evaluation of the student's comprehension, learning needs, academic progress during a lesson to a particular unit or in a course. So, it is during the course, during a particular course, when the uh, class teacher is teaching a particular topic, so we have to do the formative assessment during the class. Formative assessment helps the teacher to identify concepts that students are struggling to understand so that adjustment can be made to lessons and the instructional techniques. So, it is ongoing process. Every lecture, we have to conduct the formative assessment. We have to use the formative assessment so that we can understand where the students are struggling to understand the concept or the lesson. Then, we have to readjust our instructional technique or pedagogical techniques. The goal of formative assessment is to collect detailed information that can be used to improve the instruction and the student learning while it is happening. So, during the class, during the progress of your course. Then, summative assessment. So, it is used. They are used to evaluate student learning, skill acquisition or academic achievement at the end of the defined instructional period. So, typically end of the project, end of the unit, end of the course, end of the semester or end of the program or end of the year. So, this is summative assessment. At the end of any program, any course, that is what called a summative assessment. So, summative assessment are defined by three major criteria. The test assignment or project are used to determine whether the students have learned what they, what they were expected to learn. So, to measure the achievement of the student at the end of any particular uh, test assignment or the project. Summative assessment are given at the conclusion of the specific instructional period uh, and therefore, they are generally evaluative rather than diagnostic. So, they are used to evaluate the performance of the student, maybe at the end of the cycle test 1, maybe on completion of the first unit, maybe at the end of the unanimous examination is the example for uh, summative assessment. So, summative assessment result, results are often recorded as a score or grade that are then factored into students performance academic record. So, they are used for awarding the grade or score to the student. And this is the uh, simple diagram to understand the difference between formative assessment and the summative assessment. So, when you when the student successfully pass different formative assessment level, so the summative assessment or the, the end semester assessment will be better and he will perform well in the end semester assessment. And this is the difference between the two types of assessments. So, assessment for learning, form, formative assessment, it is for learning, whereas summative assessment, it is of learning. So, for learning, when you when you find something different, something uh, wrong, you can do the adjustment. Whereas here in the summative assessment, it is only final. It is only end of the course. So, improves the teaching and learning. So, this is a formative assessment. It will improve the teaching and learning and it is ongoing process. So, we can give the feedback and uh, we can give the practice, more practice to the student. Whereas, this is measure on competence of a particular uh, skill of the student. So, end of the instructional unit or the course. So, it is used for grading the student's performance. So, we require more formative assessment for a particular course so that the summative assessment, the performance of the student in the end semester examination or the summative assessment would be better. So, this is what the lecture notes structure I have shared earlier. Uh, in the first lecture. So, this is the topic and we have lecture outcome or learning outcome for this particular lecture. So, we may have number of le learning outcome and we may have the notes for the particular content. Then, this is this is very important at the end of the lecture. I have 
I have into I have given two types of assessment question. The first assessment question, it may be MCQ question or true or false question, and these are all formative questions. And this is the summative questions. So you can refer to the university question paper or any complete examination. You can introduce the questions here. But the form MCQ, the assessment question, the basic assessment question. So this is used during the class. So well formulated, well structured, true or false, match the following or MCQ questions that can be used during the class for assessing the performance of the students. To, from where you can understand the level of the students so that you can you can improve your lecturing style to match the learning style of the student. And this is this question. It may be used at the end of the uh, end of the lecture, or maybe you can you can ask the student to uh, write the answers for these questions as a homework, right? Necessarily, you refer the use the reference book. You mention the reference book in all your notes. So this is for formative assessment, and this is for the summative assessment. So the Bloom's taxonomy that is also we are using in our assessment technique. So there are six levels of cognitive uh, domain. Remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. So the first three, uh, preferably remember, understand, apply, are sometimes rarely analyzed. So they are used in the fixed hour examination, internal assessment test, and online university examination. And the top three, uh, they are all, they are also known as higher order learning skill, analyze, evaluate and create. So they are measured using the course project, mini project or assignment, well, well designed assignment questions. So in your test question paper or analysis examination, you we find only questions on the first three category. So thank you for listening. So if you have any queries, doubts, you can contact me. Uh, we will meet again in another lecture in the same lecture series. Until then, bye.